Let's talk about the number one best home test to determine if you may have a hypothyroid condition or not. Now, the problem with hypothyroidism is that it's very, very difficult sometimes to figure out if you have a hypothyroid problem, because let's say, for example, you have many of the common symptoms, but then you go get a test and it all comes out normal. Like, how can that happen? Or let's say, for example, your test does come out abnormal. Let's say they say you have low thyroid hormones, you have a hypothyroid condition, yet you don't have very many symptoms. You're not overweight, you don't have this, you don't have that. So it can be very, very confusing. So I wanna share with you some very interesting things about the thyroid that you probably have never heard of. And what I'm doing is I'm summarizing all of this great knowledge that I've accumulated in working with tens of thousands of people. And that's one of the advantages that I have. Uh, I was had a chance to spend 30 years in practice to work with real live people, or as compared to other experts who don't have the experience. They basically graduate and then they start teaching or they start doing research. Unfortunately, right now, it is difficult to find good knowledge because when you do searches on YouTube or Google, many times this great knowledge is buried, it's suppressed, it's very difficult to find. For example, they have Google Health right now, which Google owns YouTube. And Google Health has recently partnered with various groups that consider credible health information as what most of the experts agree on. So their definition of quality information is a lot different than my definition of quality information. So if at some point in the future, you cannot find any of Dr. Berg's information, realize I have an app. All of the videos that are on YouTube are also on that app. Okay, so, so just remember that. All right, let me get back on track. Number one, Hashimoto's is behind 90% of all of the cases when you're talking about a hypothyroid situation. I mean, that's fascinating. Only 10% are caused by something else. So this autoimmune disorder, Hashimoto's, is extremely common. And an autoimmune condition is a condition where you have antibodies that are attacking your own thyroid. And so one thing you really need to know about, and this is the most important thing, is that gluten, okay, that's a protein in certain grains, especially wheat, can mimic certain things in your thyroid gland. Now, what does that mean? What's the significance of that? That means if you develop an allergy to gluten, you will also develop an allergy to your own thyroid gland, okay? And this can set you up for a chronic inflammatory condition of your thyroid gland. And so if you have a thyroid problem, you should completely and utterly avoid gluten at all costs. And just that right there might give you a tremendous amount of relief with your thyroid condition. The other thing you need to know about Hashimoto's is that a big problem of that is the conversion from T4 to T3. Now, T4 is the inactive version of the thyroid hormone. T3 is the active version. And so when we talk about three and four, we're talking about the number of iodine molecules that are attached to that thyroid gland. So when you strip off an iodine molecule, it becomes activated. And everyone's talking about iodine for the thyroid, but for the conversion, you need selenium. That's another trace mineral, selenium. If you're not getting enough selenium, you're not gonna be able to make this conversion. So selenium is a very important trace mineral for the thyroid. And you can get it from sea kelp, which also has iodine and a lot of other nutrients for the thyroid gland. The other thing that you need to know is 80% of this conversion happens through the liver and the gallbladder. So if there's damage with the liver, let's say you have a fatty liver, or you have hepatitis, or you have cirrhosis, or you have your gallbladder removed, or you have a gallbladder problem, that could be the reason why your thyroid's not working. So it could be that you don't really have a primary thyroid. It's secondary to this other problem. And so you're doing all this treatment, you're on Synthroid for years, and you don't really seem to ever get better. And this is why when sometimes people take purified bile salts, um, their thyroid starts to work better. So because it's speeding up this conversion. Now I said 80% to the liver and the gallbladder, but the other 20% occurs in the kidney. Now, if you're a diabetic, okay, 
um, you probably have some weakness within the, within the kidney. And that could be the reason why you have a thyroid problem possibly. But the point is that the kidneys are responsible for 20% of the conversion and the liver is responsible for the 80% of the conversion. But like I said before, it could also be a lack of selenium. Oh, and by the way, one Brazil nut will give you all the selenium you need for that day. All right, here's some other things you need to know about the thyroid. And, and these things I'm telling you are the most important things that you're probably not gonna find when you do research. You'll find a lot of other information, but it might not be the most important information. It could be just kind of trivial. And so not all knowledge has an equal importance. Some things are way more important than others. What I'm teaching you right now is the important stuff. I would say probably the majority of hypothyroid cases are not primary hypothyroid cases. They're secondary to these other factors that I'm talking about now. But there's a couple other points I want to mention about that. Number one, uh, if your estrogen is too high, if your estrogen dominant, that could be the reason why your thyroid is not working. So as estrogen goes up, your thyroid goes down. So that's another cause. And so uh, women that have heavy periods that have estrogen dominance, um, a lot of times have a thyroid problem. And so instead of treating the thyroid, they should be treating the estrogen dominance or they just won't see the results. And another thing about the thyroid, if you have thyroid nodules, that is a classic iodine deficiency. And there's a very simple test to do to see if you are deficient in iodine. And I will talk about that in a minute. And the classic symptoms of a hypothyroid situation would be you're cold, you're tired, your cholesterol is higher, you're depressed, you have a puffy face, you have weight gain all over the body equally, you're getting constipation, you have hair loss, thinning of the hair, loss of eyebrows right here, dry skin, dry hair, and you have brain fog. Other than that, you're perfectly fine. So with all the confusion, how do you really know you have a true hypothyroid situation and it's not secondary to something else? Well, I'm gonna show you a really, really cool test that you probably have never heard about before, but it's pretty darn accurate, especially if you correlate it with some of these other uh, symptoms too, which I just mentioned. You know, I just released another video on the adrenal gland, uh, some real simple tests that you can do to determine if you have adrenal fatigue. So my whole goal is to give you things that you can do at home to figure things out to potentially uh, prevent the progression of a certain problem from getting worse. Because if you can catch it right in the very beginning, and then you can use natural remedies, you can save yourself a lot of grief. Before I tell you about this test, I wanted to share with you uh, one of my favorite words, okay? And that word is proactive. What is the definition of proactive? This is what it means. Controlling a situation by causing something to happen rather than responding to it after it has happened, okay? So you're being proactive if you're doing something to prevent a problem. And this definitely relates to an eating plan, which um, I recommend, of course, the healthy version of the ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. And it's really wild to me uh, of some of the responses that uh, some people will give me when I tell them to do this, this diet. Uh, they might say, well, <laughs> I don't have a weight problem, so I don't need to do any diet. I don't need to change my diet. I don't have a weight problem, not fat. Okay, well, I guess the only reason to change a diet is because of weight. What about your health? Or better yet, I had someone to tell me they can't do uh, the ketogenic diet because they're a diabetic. And I'm like, wow, wow, that is amazing. I mean, there is no diet you should be doing other than that one. So anyway, if you've been watching my videos, my whole goal is to give you the important knowledge so you can survive better. Now, this test that you're gonna to do to determine if you have a hypothyroid situation is called Waltman's sign, okay? It's an ankle reflex test. So you're gonna be using a reflex hammer. If you don't have a reflex hammer, you could just use the uh, end of a butter knife or the end of a screwdriver or anything, even like this, because you're gonna be tapping um, your Achilles tendon, okay? And there's a reflex in your Achilles tendon that should cause you, when you tap it, to do this. It should kick in and kick out. It should just kind of like do a little jerk like that. 
just like if you were to tap any reflex right here and you would see this, this motion right here. So you're gonna do this with the Achilles tendon. You can actually do it with both ankles, okay? Now with a true hypothyroid condition, what you're gonna notice with your foot, it's gonna kick out, okay, when you tap the Achilles tendon, but it's gonna be very, very slow on the return. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna contract fast, but it's not gonna reset fast, okay? Very important because the muscles involved in hypothyroidism um, can't relax as good as normal muscles. Even though it's really the nervous system that's affecting the muscles, uh, the nerves and muscles are slower with a hypothyroid condition. So we're gonna be focusing on the reaction after you tap and it, and it kicks, the, the return back to rest or normal, okay? That's what we're gonna be focusing on. If it's slower than it should be, chances are you could have a hypothyroid situation. So very simply, maybe you uh, kneel on your couch, okay? Um, and then you can tap the Achilles tendon and it will jerk and then watch for the rebound. If it's very, very sluggish on both ankles, suspect a hypothyroid situation. That is actually a pretty accurate uh, method of figuring out a true hypothyroid situation. So if it's normal, okay, then you need to look at some of these other reasons for a thyroid problem. Maybe you have a thyroid condition that's secondary to something else. Now you can also measure iodine, like an iodine patch, which only gives you information about iodine deficiency. And like if you have Hashimoto's, which is 90% of the time, it might not be an issue with iodine, but it could be. Now to measure an iodine deficiency, you'll take the inside of your upper arm or the thigh, and you'll take a little cotton ball and you'll rub some iodine that you can get at the drugstore, 2%. Just rub it around in a circle about two inches by two inches, okay? Either on your arm or your leg. And then you wait for about an hour. If it's still there after an hour, chances are you are deficient in iodine. It should be able to be absorbed into the skin and you shouldn't see a yellow stain, okay? So that's the iodine patch test. So the next video that you should watch would be on various food tips for the thyroid gland. I put them up right here, check them out.